everyone, my name is Katie. If you're new here, I talk about gap years a lot. And this year has been a year for me to really connect with just like so many people who are on gap years. Like I didn't even know that there were so many people. I just sort of like fell into talking about this topic because I pretty much like by default because of COVID, I took a gap year from college I'm right in the middle of it. So it's been definitely a weird year. <laughs> It's been a really weird year and a bad one, but um, I lo love my gap year and uh, it has been a really like eye-opening experience. So I think that's definitely something that I want to address in this video. So I've made a lot of gap year content and you could like go and like read the comments on it and um, I'm not gonna like add anybody, but the comments are there and you guys often write in sort of your own experiences and I think it's really cool and I think that maybe people aren't paying attention, they aren't reading the comments, like they might miss some of those comments or fears that are like other people are having and, ex and experiencing. The first two, these really go hand in hand. The two most common fears that I see about a gap year is that you're worried that if you take one, you're worried about being productive on it or the flip side of the coin is that you're worried about being too productive that you sort of like miss the experience of a gap year. I can speak to this uh, firsthand because this summer, because of COVID, like I usually work during the summer and I did work some in the summer, but I had a lot of free time. And the whole time that I had time off, I was so panicked about getting a job. Then the second I got a job, I started doing YouTube and <laughs> I threw myself into this channel like so hard that I would work three days a week, but then posting two videos a week and like learning how to do YouTube, I would literally work seven days a week, like sitting at my computer. I definitely over like exerted myself for a while, like throwing myself into a project because I really felt that pressure of like, I need to do something with this time. I'm, it, it's taken me a long time to like try and find balance. I think that I'm still kind of trying to find balance. I mean, especially cause I, I live at home too. So that's like another like added layer of of like being productive. I don't know if that makes any sense. It's definitely different than like the productive feeling that I get when like I'm at college. Just because, you know, you fall into old routines and habits when you're back at home. So it's, that's definitely like a whole nother piece of the puzzle that like can get, you know, confusing. So talking about worrying about being productive. Yeah, like I get this. Uh, I would be worried about this too. And to be quite honest, I think this year particularly, I think if you're on a gap year this year, like, <laughs> I, I barely got an internship and I can see that if like a, the perfect situation like didn't sort of work out, you know, fears about going out like into the world and having a job and being around people, like that would have been really, really hard this year. Um, I think now that more people are getting vaccinated, I can see where some anxieties might be like a little bit more lifted this fall and spring. So I wouldn't be too worried about that like productive feeling because you know, if you're vaccinated and people are still following guidelines in the fall and the, you know, the spring and all that, which I think the world will be getting, getting better at that point. I wouldn't be too worried about that for this coming year because I think the job market's starting to open up a little bit more and you know we should all be feeling like maybe a little bit more comfortable i can see you know definitely that if you're not like i completely understand that too so i guess it's like finding the right type of productiveness is definitely important and to be quite honest like and i've said this in other videos like i really feel like i've gotten a lot out of this year even if i haven't like had it all figured out because i definitely haven't uh <laughs> have had days where I did absolutely nothing. And I have, I mean, when I say I've spent this year like in this room, like I literally mean it, like I go here and then I go sit like in an office and I don't see the world. So it's been a really a year of like not too many perspectives shifting because when you just do the same thing over and over again, like you can get like a little bit hamster wheel, like you start to go crazy, which like I've definitely, <laughs> definitely, I'm, I'm fine, I'm fine. <laughs> I'm good. I'm really, I'm good. That's, that's pretty much what I have to say on that. So I wouldn't be, if I wouldn't be afraid of this. It's definitely, I think there's so many fears surrounding gap years, but like this one, but I think that if you were taking it in 2020, like that was definitely something to worry about. But with the world opening back up, like I think that, you know, if you want to volunteer or uh, travel, like I think even some travel things are starting to open up or maybe you spend, you know, the beginning of the year working and then the later half of the year, not, I don't know. The second fear or third, I guess, is that gap years are not very normalized. Okay, I feel like this fear was valid like last year when I was taking it, I was like, literally no one I know has ever taken a gap year, except like maybe two people that like I knew of. 
I mean, it's not really that's it's not really that scary once you do it. I think now <laughs> it is very normalized. The more people I talk to, the more I realize how many students this year are on gap years, and it's a lot. So I would feel less weird, definitely, that you're like you know in the minority of people who take a gap year because like the amount of people taking a gap year, like I feel like has increased exponentially this year, and especially after this literal pandemic year, like just do what you want. You know, don't let the haters get you down, okay? The fourth one. So a lot of you guys wrote that, so this is like, this is kind of complicated because it was written like a bunch of different ways, but the sentiment is really the same. That you are so done with school, like so burned out from online school and all of that, that you feel like going to college next year will, you won't have motivation for school or you won't be able to succeed. I see this a lot. For that I say, I think that's the perfect reason to take a gap year, to be quite honest. I was feeling that way. I am so that person, like I don't slow down and I like being busy. I like working towards a goal and like having that empty year like scared the crap out of me. Okay, I lost my train of thought, but having motivation for school, I think you know yourself as a person and I, before I took this gap year, I was supposed to study abroad. So I was like, oh, that's gonna be like my gap year. <laughs> Little did I know. <laughs> that's not funny. That's really not funny. Yeah, I was like so burned out and like studying abroad is not really like, like it's, te yeah, it's technically like a year off. So I, I pretty much like, if I get to study abroad next year, like it'll be like, I feel like a gap year do over, but I'll still be in school and it'll count. So like, I don't know. But I was like so looking for that. Like I was burned out and not in a way like I love college and like I, I love it, but I needed a break from, I don't know, for me, like my career and the future and what I'm gonna do with my life, like when I'm in college or like even in high school too, like those first couple years of college and then the last couple years of high school combined, like that is a lot of pressure for one person to handle. And I had so many like existential breakdowns and like, I just, and I think that like a lot of, a lot of people have that, like you are definitely not alone. Like the more people I talk to, like, Literally everyone's like, how am I supposed to know I'm 18? And it's like, no, you don't have to like, <laughs> but like the, but you also have to because like the tuition bill's coming. So like you have to pick a major. I don't know. It just, it all feels so final. And like, like in some ways it is, but then in other ways, like I, it's not, nothing matters. Like it's like everything matters, but also nothing matters. And I needed like a year off to like process that. So little did I know that I was going to be getting this extra bonus here. So fun. So I think that honestly, I wouldn't be afraid of not like that fear of like not having motivation. I think that a, you could be a good candidate for a gap year. Like I think that some time off can, can do anybody some good, so. Okay, so the next one is that you will lose your opportunity to go to college. Um, this is definitely one that's like very common. Like I had a panic, a panic moment where I was like, I'm gonna be 23 when I graduate college. Like I'm gonna be so old. And like, I still panic about that. You know what? <laughs> But uh, other days I'm like, no, it's fine. Like, I'm just, I'm just living life. Like, I think that we all get on this timeline and uh, yeah, it, I think like really it doesn't matter. And like, I have to keep telling myself that to be quite honest, but it's really true. I mean, it's, I, I shouldn't be, I shouldn't even be having to tell myself that because like it is, it's honestly true. Like there is no timeline for your life. Like things are just gonna happen when it happens. And sometimes the world shuts us down and that happens too. Um, so I think that losing your opportunity to go to college, most schools can let, let you defer a year. I would just sort of look into that like technically wise, but um, no, college will be there waiting for you. Like if you go when you're 19, like all the 18 year olds who are just starting college aren't gonna be like, ah, a 19 year old, what do we do? Like, <laughs> you're gonna be fine. Like, you know what I mean? You're gonna make friends. You're gonna get right into it. Uh, it's college, it's different. So that's what I would say. And the last one is that you will lose your academic edge. Yes, this is actually a fear of mine because I have to go back to school next year and I have spent a year not exercising my brain in the slightest. Haven't done a math problem in a year. Nope, not one time, have not. I still have both of my science liberal arts credits after this, which actually, I, if I study abroad, I won't take it for like a whole nother year. So uh, let's just hope that I remember like sophomore biology. Yeah, you know what I would say for this one? Like, I think this is gonna, this is my metaphor for you today. Like, um, your, your brain is like a loaf of bread. And I feel like once the time you like finish high school, like it's baked. You know what I mean? But like, <laughs> this is, no, this is getting out of hand. Yeah, I think like you, the point of high school is like you learn, and like middle school is like you learn how to learn and 
you sort of get like those baseline skills. I don't, it's not like you're gonna go to college and like forget how to write a paper. Like I think that those skills are like solidified and you just have to kind of trust that you have it in you to, to do it. Yeah, I hope this video helped <laughs> any of you who are worried about this stuff because like I, I know I have worried about all of these things um, constantly. So <laughs> I'm on a gap year. I post new videos Thursday. Yeah, thank you so much for watching and comment down below if you have any other fears that I didn't address and uh, I'll comment back to you. So uh, leave those down below. Okay, thanks so much for watching. Ba, 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 ba.